Hello, today we're going to talk about a new program we're rolling out called ET3. ET3 stands for Emergency Triage, Treat, and Transport. This model was developed by Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services and is meant to provide greater flexibility for EMS to address emergency health care needs following a 911 call. It is made to give alternatives to just transporting to the emergency department by either transport to an alternative destination partner or a TIP, which is treatment in place. The overall goal of ET3 is to get the right patient to the right level of treatment with thorough treat in place or alternate destination agreements. It is also to encourage appropriate utilization of services as to meet the healthcare needs of the patient and allow for a better availability of EMS for TCD calls. GMR is currently implementing the ET3 program across 62 markets. This program started in 2020 and is a five-year model. GMR chose to participate to have another tool in their toolbox to help both the EMS system and the patient more efficiently. Right care, right time, right outcome. This will uh, improve operational efficiencies by ED wait times, not having unnecessary trips to the ED and improving patient experience. If the patient qualifies for this program and you give the pitch, but they still want to go to the hospital, it is their choice. We, we will still need to take them to the hospital. So the ET3 visit guidelines. First, identify any scene safety or other hazards. Make visual assessment. Decide if they are sick, not sick, similar to AMLS. Complete an assessment, making sure to obtain sample, OPQRST, etc. Get the patient consent. This cannot be done without the patient's full consent. So some disqualifying criteria includes high acuity complaints, complaints that are difficult to examine like severe abdominal pain, genital areas, chest pain, etc. And then if, if they're under the age of six. Considerations to look at on the tip side, questions of capacity, protocol requirements, Vital signs outside a normal range. Uh, we can use the same vitals as what we use for KCATC. If in doubt, always follow your local treatment transport protocol. So ET3 is based on two principles, transport to alternative destination or treatment in place. So we'll start with alternative destinations. These are predetermined in each market and based on capabilities of x-ray, lab, urgent care, behavioral, psych, payer network. Some alternative destinations only accept certain insurance carriers or they may uh, refuse self-care or self-pay. Also, their hours of operation. So um, most of the ones around here close around seven, eight o'clock in the evening. So those that work nights, you may wonder how this is gonna help you. But if this is getting utilized during the day, um, then it'll open up emergency rooms at night and keep the hospitals off high volume. So it will actually benefit you. So modes of transport may be POV, friends or family, public transportation, ride share, ambulance. Um, when we look at notifications and handoff at alternative destinations, whether they're ambulatory or non-ambulatory patients, we'll still need to assist them in the waiting room and make sure that we give a handoff. So alternative destinations uh, for us right now, again, is KCATC, Kansas City Assessment and Triage Center. So um, this facility, we got to remember that they're strictly voluntary and must not have any medical needs. They do not allow walk-ins. Uh, they are open 24-7, 365 days, but they are limited on beds. Um, they have a total of 16 eight for sobering and eight for mental health. Their stay is only 23 hours and they can leave at any time. So you can reassure them that it's not a locked facility. There's no security. It's strictly voluntary. Uh, and that the facility is there to assist them in getting them uh, what they're needing and what they're wanting. So some criteria to look at is they need to be greater than 18 years of age, systolic blood pressure, under 190, heart rate under 120, 
their blood sugar needs to, needs to be between 60 and 250 milligrams per deciliter, no traumatic medical needs, you need to make sure that they're non-combative, there's no restraints or sedation, and most of all, that they can self-transfer. The second one, uh, once the agreement goes through, is comprehensive mental health. Uh, once this agreement goes through and we get more additional information, we'll actually get that out to everyone. For alternative destinations, again, we only have the uh, one facility participating. Currently, we don't have any urgent cares or physicians' offices uh, participating. So the treatment in place, this is actually our bread and butter. So um, we need these are emergency room physicians within the Envision Healthcare Network. So again, when the patient states that they don't want to use the program because they're afraid it's going to be a retired physician, uh, you can reassure them that these are current emergency room physicians, just with, like what they would get if they went to the emergency department. Um, we do have uh, currently 15 physicians licensed in Missouri that's participating in this program with additional ones coming. ReliMD is a standalone platform and can house virtual meetings, exam rooms. And then the no notification and handoff uh, to the virtual provider can be done by either the crew phone, patient's device, or the tough book. So when we do this, keep it simple and straightforward when pitching to the patient, show some excitement, and that you stand behind the program. Listen to the patient and then give them key benefits based on what their concerns or questions are. So. For example, you know, let them know that this will allow them not to have to leave or wait in the uh, emergency room waiting room, especially if they, if they have additional kids or they're elderly and they don't want to get out. Um, let them know again that this is the same type of doctor that they would see if they went to the emergency room. If you'd like a copy of the guidelines that you see in the PowerPoint, um, there should be some copies in the crew room on the tables. Or you can ask Pete and I, and we'll get you a copy. So here's an example of a script to the patient for consent. Mr. John Doe, I would like to try and help you right here today. I can connect you with an emergency room doctor right here. The doctor will ask you some questions, and I will help them to get you the care that you need. They may even be able to call in some prescriptions for you. The whole process takes less time than what it will take to get you registered in the hospital, and we'll see if we can get you feeling better without having to go anywhere. Again, reassure them this will allow them not to have to wait in the waiting room. It will avoid any uh, emergency department charges, so out of pocket will be a lot less for them. Um, and again, it is the same type of doctor that they'll actually be seeing. So let's talk about the virtual visit a little bit. Um, you can get to it by the smartphone app, which is on the crew phones and the tough book, or you can go to any web browser and type in gmr.relymd.app forward slash login. So the username is gonna be independence at gmr.net, and the password is gonna be capital E, lowercase PCR, the number four, lowercase AMR, with four exclamation points. So again, that would be EPCR for AMR, four exclamation points with a capital E. Next screen is going to state uh, GMR Independence, Missouri, and want you to validate that. And then when, uh, once it's correct, you'll choose Add New Patient. Then it's going to ask for the patient's name, sex, and date of birth. These are required fields. Once you get that in it, entered, uh, just press Submit. And then the next screen will ask you if you want to use current location or use home address. Choose the one that best matches, including state. Then it will ask you for a callback number that you want the provider to call back on. Once you decide which device you want to use, make sure that you use make sure that you choose that option, whether it's the patient's uh, or EMS's device, and then uh, choose if it's a TIPS or if it's an AMA refusal. So if you choose AMA refusal, this is if you have that patient that really needs to go to the emergency room but has capacity and doesn't want to go, 
Um, you can call the physician and see if they can persuade the patient into going. The next screen will ask you uh, for the patient's home address, city, state, and zip, the patient's phone number, and email. Please get an email. Uh, we need the email anyway, so you might as well have it on file for your report, so make sure that you get that. If the patient doesn't have an address for some reason, uh, make sure that you actually put the address of where the call is. Next, you're going to enter vital signs or choose why unable to enter vital signs. Then once on this screen, the physician uh, has been notified and you can see the vital signs and the clock has started. So if you look in the upper right hand um, portion of your screen, you'll actually see a clock. By putting in the patient's address and vital signs, uh, you won't need to give this info to the physician anymore. This will also save you time um, as you can do this while waiting for the physician. Press the I'm ready button to join the physician once this has all been entered. Let the patient know if using their device to answer if they see a 1855 number up here. You'll then see confirmation that you're checked in. The button will turn green when the physician's ready to start the visit. Once you press the green button, you will then be able to see the physician. Make sure that you have done your full assessment along with the plan. And then make sure that down at the bottom, your microphone and your camera, the buttons are green and that they're actually on. So here's an example of a warm handoff um, for the tips. Let the physician know you're, uh, you are with uh, GMR and that you're Give them your name and your title, whether you're an EMT or a paramedic. Let them know that this is a TIPS candidate. Then give them the patient's name and any family that might be in the room with them. Uh, and then explain you know, what their complaint is and what your findings are. Then ask them if they have any questions on the vital signs before you actually hand them off to the patient. Then here's an example of an AMA refusal. It's the same thing as the tips. However, you're letting the doctor know uh, that the patient has capacity and wants to refuse. Make sure to ask them again if they have any questions before handing off the patient. So when closing the visit, uh, provider will disconnect. Then you'll actually have some charting requirements that you'll need to do. So uh, you'll want to document the following. If they were uh, for or against the virtual visit, you'll need to do a full charge as you normally would. And then choose the correct disp uh, disposition for a vi virtual visit. Make sure to choose the correct outcome. Virtual visit and transport to ERED. Virtual visit and no transport required. Virtual visit and patient refuses transport. When starting the PCR, you will choose 911. Then you're going to choose um, yes for the patient crew contact made. Then you're going to say yes to virtual visit, alternative destination eligibility. Then it's going to pull up and you can enter the patient demographics in along with the vital signs that they didn't pull up automatically. Then you're going to choose the correct outcome. And then in the call information under disposition category, choose treat, no transport. And then under disposition, choose virtual visit. Or if it's an alter, uh, alternate destination, choose in disposition category transported. And then uh, disposition, choose alternate destination. Again, if you want a copy of the guidelines, they're available um, on the tables out in the crew room. Uh, if there are none, just ask uh, Peter or myself and we'll get you a copy. Thank you.